Hey guys, we recently asked you what kind of videos you'd like to see on here, there's anything in particular. One of the most requested videos was actually a behind the scenes video. Kind of like looking at what goes into making these detailing videos that you guys see. So everything from filming to prep to the equipment to editing. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in this video. First of all, that we need to go downstairs or I need to change actually first. <laughs> then we'll go downstairs, crack on with the detail and take it from there. So let's get moving. Hello, Jeff. So first thing then, obviously, let's get the garage open. Uh, so we need to get all the equipment and stuff, but before we go into the garage, I actually need to get the equipment itself to do the video. Sorry if it's just started echoing in here. So in here is my gearbox. So we will need possibly the gimbal, microphones. We need a light, you'll see that in a moment. Um, tripod, softbox, and the light stand in here. I'm not going to go through too much of this, but we have tons of tripods. Let's say Quasar Science Tube LED RGB light, green screen, um, big video tripod, that really nice fluid head and everything. This one here is a slider. Anyway, we'll get all into all that in a moment. So need to get all this into the garage. Ignore that, that's been scrapped and set up. So we'll get that set up. So just like that then, everything's set up. So basically we have all the garage lights on um, just to illuminate basically the surroundings, not for me personally, that's what the softbox is. Before we can even start filming, you'll see all of this. Now, those who have been watching the channel for quite some time now, will know that basically the conservatory where we've just got the gear from was the sort of like prep room that's where all my deliveries got put but we're going to try and turn that into a bit of a playroom for the child so <laughs> everything's in here now now this just brings me onto a valid point um sorry i keep going dark so i'll just say this way all of those parcels there i need to go through all of those and see what's in it so Yay, I know people think, oh great, you're a YouTuber, you get free cleaning stuff. Yes, we do get free cleaning stuff. However, hopefully this behind the scenes is going to give you a little bit of insight as to what goes into some of these videos. I need to research all of those products. Um, I need to shoot B-roll for those products. I need to do promotional on Instagram and all of that good stuff. Sorry, the camera head's coming a bit loose there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work goes into before I've even cracked the bottle open. Sometimes on the Friday before I'm even going to be detailing. So yes, there's all a lot, a lot of work goes into all of this. So a lot of this, by the way, is going to be given away. There's like quite a few turtle wax boxes. I think one of these is full of merchandise, like hoodies and t-shirts and stuff. Anyway, so... Once I've shot all the B-roll and everything else that I want to do and the promotional photos, and I often shoot a lot of the promo stuff whilst I'm detailing as well, which I'll touch on shortly, I then get to where I'm stood here. So this shot looks fairly familiar. So here we go. I've got my old camera just standing as a replacement on this um, Geekoto, I think it's called. Uh, it's generic branded tripod travel tripod really nice and useful if you undo that there it pivots around quite easy so we use that and yeah one thing i don't like is one static shot so oftentimes you'll see me here and i'll be talking let's pick g6 perfect glass for example so i'll be saying welcome back guys today we're looking at g6 perfect glass from g technic and then i'll switch the camera to bring in a bit tighter maybe something like that i then have to remember what i've just said and re-say that so i can try and get my cut a bit more natural so it looks like i'm using two cameras so welcome back guys today we're going to be looking at g6 from g technic this is the perfect glass cleaner and today we're going to be taking a look at how this performs on windows 
you get the idea and i do that multiple times so we're in we're back over there back here and then that also takes effect in the edit making that a little bit longer but anyway something you guys just might not have thought of oh and the reason for the softbox as well is so even if the lighting conditions change outside and affect everything else i hopefully will always be well lit so and apologies i keep looking at the viewfinder apologies i'm not looking straight in the lens that does irritate me but when i'm hand holding i just want to make sure i'm in focus so this is the pre-detail side of things that again you guys just may not have thought of um similar happens when we go onto the detail it's quite warm i don't have to do a full detail whilst i'm doing that let's see how i feel so uh, yes let's get into a detail So before we even get into the detail then, it's a case of taking plenty of before shots. So normally I'm doing these handheld, especially on the new camera, uh, which is the S5. I'm currently recording on you now, and that has in-body stabilization. But I sometimes do put it on the gimbal as well, uh, because it's quite warm. I've not really got the time to, uh, to get that set up. So I do get quite a lot of angles and you'll see I often have to do it multiple times. Um, so this case is just going around and yeah, getting all the dirt and just seeing what looks good, basically. So, so yeah, this takes a little bit of time, um, a little bit more than, again, what you might think goes into this. Um, so yeah, before I've even turned the pressure washer on, turned the taps on, I probably spent 10 minutes just with a camera going around, getting some before pictures for Instagram. And yeah, the before footage for you guys to see how dirty it is. In this case, it's not overly dirty, it's just dusty. Um, and then we'd crack on with the detail. By the way, the camera's not actually turned on. I'm gonna cheat and put in some other footage. So with the beer roll done then, we get onto the detail um, and this is literally how videos get made. So <laughs> constantly moving this camera around, you guys can see that over there. Apologies for the noise. And uh, yeah, this is why detailing videos, when I do a video, it takes a hell of a long time. Like a quick detail for me. Could be out here three, four hours. And by that, I mean just a, what I'm gonna to do today in this video, a general wash. Um, nothing fancy, no tar, no decon, just wash the wheels, wash the paintwork, dry it. That should be half hours work. Like maybe an hour. And then don't forget to move this camera again for a different shot. Constantly having to dry my hands as well because I damage cameras with wet hands. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, that's like an hour's job if you factor in put away time and set up time with your pressure washer. Uh, and I like to win as well, just going off topic when I get up here. That. And then I know where I am. All right, then another angle. Zoom in, and let's get that. So yeah, it takes a lot, as you can see. I don't just clean a wheel. I'm cleaning a quarter of the wheel, moving the camera for a shot, because I don't always know how the edit is going to go. And as a result of that, I end up using a lot of products, a lot of water, because right now it's quite warm um, you've got to be fairly quick at doing this anyway at the best of times when you've got a camera 
there's a very good chance that product's going to dry on when you go in at it so sometimes i might have to foam a car with a light layer of foam a second time um, just to keep it wet and avoid drying on that may not be the best cleaned wheel ever and then i'm gonna pull the camera back out at this point i'd probably have the products i've just used put it down here and get some shots for instagram or whatnot but let's just give it a rinse And then of course repeat that process for the other three wheels i don't always do it on the back wheel depending on how good i've got the front wheel um what the weather's like what the sun's like um this is always the sunnier side so that's why i do a lot of my shooting on this side the downside is it dries a bit quicker so yeah i'm just gonna pause you guys while i clean the rest of the wheels and come back in a sec so that's the wheels done then um this is when we get into a real mess or things take time snow foaming and washing because my hands are constantly wet i'm constantly moving the camera changing all that i shoot it manual so i'm changing the aperture the shutter speed um yeah i hate getting it wet so i have to keep drying my hands so anyway hopefully you get an idea that's what this is all about So this is where quite often then I might have to re-wet the car um, so it takes so long moving the camera. I've not actually moved the camera uh, this time. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, this is the sunny side. So it dries very, very quick. Um, if this was really dirty as well, I'd be hitting it with some APC. For those that being super critical. So yeah, it's kind of this, go back, rinse grab the camera let's get a shot down here cleaning this headlight as i say today i'm kind of cheating with that camera um, <laughs> it's not actually turned on it's a prop uh, but i'll overlay some clips of what exactly i mean god this roof is really really dusty so let's give that an actual clean same on this side down these roof bars and then around the aerial. Also, that's snow foam, that's real time. It makes me laugh when I see people taking two, three minutes to snow foam a car. What the hell are you doing? It should take like 30 seconds. Just go left to right, top to bottom, bottom to top. None of this zigzag waving about malarkey, but hey ho, and then rinse. So, I think you get the idea then. There's a lot of stop starting. Um, let's just sort this image out. There we go. There's a lot of stop starting going on, uh, which is, yeah, what takes a lot of time um, in these details. My face gonna lighten up? I don't know. Let's get into the back garden. See if a bit more sun around there. So, yeah, that's what takes a lot of the time is the stop and start in uh, doing the detail so with that said obviously that's drying out now so <laughs> i'm going to crack on and wash the car whilst i do that 
there's a lot of projects I'm working on. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll clip to that bit and then we'll come back to you in a moment, talk about equipment and all the gear and editing. So yeah, I've got a little favor from you guys. Right, so whilst I'm outside cleaning then, Jeff, can you stop? This is the stuff I have to deal with as well. Dog walking about, especially on laminated canaries claws. Anyway, whilst I'm outside cleaning then, <laughs> he's gonna carry on walking. So whilst I'm outside cleaning then, um, yeah, as I said, there's a little project that I'm working on. Again, as I mentioned in previous videos, I can't say too much about it right now. Two things that I need from you guys, the viewers, you can be involved in this is old photos and videos, um, ideally 90s, 80s, or even older if possible, although I'm well aware of who was photographing themselves, video themselves in the 80s, washing a car. You may have some pictures lying around. If you do, much appreciated if you could send them to randomly set at hotmail.co.uk. The other thing I was gonna ask, the other thing I wanted to ask for as well is, I need a lot of footage of people cleaning the cars. Um, so you don't have to have a YouTube channel. Um, of course, if you have got a YouTube channel, it kind of helps because you've probably got all the gear and you kind of know what you're doing with a video camera. Um, but yeah, I just need footage of you washing your car. It doesn't need to be loads of footage. Um, it can be as arty as you want, have bits out of focus, bits in focus, you can have camera movement. Um, yeah, it's all for this project that I'm working on. Um, and of course, anything that I do use, I will credit to you guys as well. If the footage is really big, use the same email that I've just mentioned for photos, randomly set at hotmail.co.uk and use WeTransfer, you can transfer up to two gig. But I'll let you know more about that. You can also message me direct on Instagram as well at randomly set if you're unsure of anything, if you don't know how to get that to me. So yeah, more information will be coming on this in future videos. I've got a few more loose ends to uh, tidy up and yeah. Hopefully, like I said, I can give you more soon, but for the time being, old photos and videos is much appreciated, and anything current of you cleaning cars um, would really, really help. So yeah, with that said, um, let's get back into the behind the scenes and we'll take a look at equipment now. Right, so onto the equipment, then now the details are all done. This is the bit that you guys don't necessarily see, and this is just things that I've collected over the years and only a fraction of what I've got, to be honest. So we'll start off with the Lumix G7. I've had this for about four or five years. It's what all the videos on the YouTube channel have been done with. Pretty decent. It cost me about five, 600 pounds, I'm not sure. And to go with that, I also got a 25 millimeter prime lens f1.7 as well which i use a lot for b-roll shots get a really good shallow depth of field a couple of gopros and cheapo gopros i'm sure you all know what a gopro is by now we have the drone over here the dji mavic pro don't use that in a lot of detailing videos but if i go traveling i will take that with me um, even if it's going to something like white stock or Anyway, not on my driveway. I'll try and get something. Over here, the basically vloggers standard uh, video, ro Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. So the original was the Rode Video Mic. Was that right? Yeah, um, but that was the Pro Plus. That was the one that again came out four or five years ago. What else do we have? So for the S5, I'm shooting on the 2060 mil. I've got a 50 mil prime, this is a f1.8. Again, amazing shallow depth of field. And also, for those who are interested, this is a micro four thirds sensor. It's got two times crop factor, so a 25 mil on this is the equivalent of 50 on that. Just in case you didn't know that. Also, that one's a full frame camera, the S5, which again means the depth of field is just boo! And the color and everything else is great. This beast here, is the DJI Ronin SC. Again, not something I get out on every video because it does take some setting up. Although, if you're using the same camera, then hopefully you'll have to keep reconfiguring it every single time, like rebalancing it. Um, and then also lights. So filming me right now, I've got the big softbox light in here that I showed you in the garage, so I don't need to turn that around. We have down here 
the Quasar Science Light. This one is absolutely amazing. So if I just quickly go through some features on this, let's have a quick look. We've got presets, we've got effects. I don't know what we're on now, rainbow. It's just gonna go through. Short circuit, paparazzi. I probably put a flash warning up before this. I think there's a police car effect. Um, there we go. There's all sorts of cool things on there. So I'll pull that back down because that is lighting up the back wall. Also got some of these pocket lights as well. These are Wii Light SO3 from Amazon. I've got one over in the corner as well, just adding a bit of blue over there. These are controlled by an app as well. I think it's Bluetooth they use. Is it Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? I think it's Bluetooth that they use. They cost about 30 quid on Amazon each. So I bought one, I liked it. That is on 1% power. Lights me quite well. Obviously, just a fraction of the power. That over there is on about 30% power, just shining a bit of blue up there. So that's a lot of the gear then. Um, and this area here is where I store all my gear down there. Um, behind you right now then are my monitors, my editing setup. So I guess that comes as gear. So we'll spin you around and take a look at that. So the final piece of equipment then is the editing setup. So apologies if you can hear some echoing. I've just put these sound panels up just yesterday. So I'm hoping it's cut down some of the echo. So yeah, I've got this PC here then. It's running an i5-9600, 3.7 gigahertz. It's got 16 gig of RAM in there and a GeForce 1660 Super graphics card. Everything's done from a solid state drive as well, which is probably the main thing that gives you faster editing times. It's not always about the RAM and the graphics card, especially if you're using Premiere Pro, which actually doesn't rely that much on graphics processing. It's more processor CPU. So solid state storage is what you want. Also, I edit a lot from a NAS system, which I've not brought upstairs. Actually, it's downstairs that, so I've got a NAS drive. I don't delete any footage. I've got every single clip I've recorded for the last six or seven years. So not just detailing videos, my own travel videos and vlogging videos and everything I did on my personal channel prior to detailing. So yeah, here we've got as well, just in case you're wondering, we've got an LG ultra wide 34 inch. That is a QHD resolution. Oh, total got a view Sonic 27 inch. Again, a QHD resolution as well. This is the more color accurate monitor, the one down bottom. So when I'm editing, I'll quickly show you that on the next section. I'll reference up here and edit down here basically. And then to work with, we've got the Logitech wireless keyboard and Master uh, MX3, is it called? MX Master 3, that's what it's called, the wireless mouse. Really like this mouse. And the K540 wireless keyboard. And as some of you may have noticed this, I've created my own macro keyboard as well, so I can edit at the touch of a button. Again, I'll show you that shortly. So, oh, we've got the microphone as well for voiceovers. That's pretty much it, equipment wise. It's a lot of equipment. <laughs> so I hope you guys have found this bit interesting. The next bit, we're just going to talk about the editing. I'll quickly touch on that because at the end of the day, it takes me days, if not weeks, depending on what I'm doing, to edit a video. Um, and you're not going to sit through and watch all of that. So let's dive into that. Right, so now we're into the editing program. So as I mentioned earlier, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. I also do use After Effects from time to time for things like green screen work, if I do any of that, tracking, um, 3D animation, if I put any of that in, and the lower thirds and stuff I often do in After Effects, but 99% of my editing is done in Premiere Pro. So this is the layout I have, this is the project I'm currently working on. I'll show you how I do this from the start, so I could do a whole video on this in depth on its own. If that's something you want, let me know in the comments below. So the first thing you'll do, you'll go out and you'll have done some detailing. You'll come in with your memory cards, however many you've got, and you'll have a folder. So I've got a folder called the detailing space for all the videos that I do for this. I have a folder here called folder. Now this is my template folder. In here, what I've got is I've got folders for my GoPro footage, my Lumix G7. In fact, I need to create one for Lumix S5. Um, all my photos, I've got a project called template. In that blank template file is a bunch of assets that I will use in pretty much every video. 
and I've got a notepad file with a bunch of tags that I use in most YouTube uploads, um, some keywords in my descriptions. I'm not gonna open that right now, it's quite boring. So what I'll do typically is I'll make a copy of that folder and then simply rename it to whatever project is called. So that's that. And then there we go, we've got that and I will then dump all my S5 footage into there, all my Lumix footage into there, I've got GoPro. I will create a folder for drone, whatever. But they're the main cameras that I'm gonna be using. Once that's done then, so here we go, this is a project, as I say, I'm working on, everything is color coded for me as well. And this layout all makes sense to me. Um, it might not do to you guys. So I'll tell you what, we'll start off on a fresh project. So let's close this project and we shall open up the next G Technic series project. So let's get the next one open. I've already imported the videos for you. So the beauty with this is this bin is looking quite full right now. And this is where basically I've done every single video in this. So I've got all my sequences. In fact, I'll rewind a section. If I open up that blank one, wherever it's gone, in this blank template, what you'll see is all that's in there is a bunch of assets, so color mats, graphics, lower thirds, sound effects that I use, my own transitions that I've created. They're all in there and a bunch of sequence settings as well. So I don't shoot in 1080, I don't export in 1080. I actually shoot, um, export, should I say, at a two to one aspect ratio. Don't know why, just do. It gives me a bit of wiggle room up and down. I've got some 4K. I've also got social media sequences. So these are settings in various landscape, one by one, ready for Instagram stories, different, yeah, basically different formats, different frame rates that it's gonna be exporting at as well. So we'll just close that project off. Don't really need that one open. So in this way, so I've got a nested sequence, if you're familiar with this. We'll just quickly load this one. This all needs deleting just here. I should have cleared this already ahead of time. That's the voiceover and there we go. So that's typically how my timeline starts off. The battery died on that a minute ago. So you know, here we've got a blank sequence then ready. Um, here I've got the intro ready. Uh, this red marker here is where it starts fading out so I know straight away where to line up the next bit of footage. I've then got my typical lower third with my name on it. I've got my like and dislike scattered from a previous project. What I can then do, I touched on this macro keyboard earlier, is if I go into all the footage, so I've already imported that. If I go into the Lumix S5, sort it by frame rate, I can now select all the 50 frames a second because you need to pre-compose it down to 25 if you want to shoot slow motion. So I typically color code that into a dark blue, press no audio, so don't need any audio on slow motion and change that to 25 frames per second. All done in presses of buttons instead of having to right click. That's the beauty of this macro. What it also means I can do if I close this project, I know I'm all over the place, but bear with me here guys. Um, if I just quickly close this project, we can save the work I've done on that. And let's open the garage therapy one again that I'm doing. So you may be interested in what all this is that I've got going on the screen. So let's open up a clip here. So here we have a whole bunch of footage. And as you can see on the main window, this is just loading up what I've double clicked in here. So this is the source footage, it's what, what's loading up right now. So I can double click on all of this and I will typically go through and think, oh, I like that part of the clip. Press the I for the in, O for out, and then drag that down onto my timeline and that will then appear there. Coincidentally, right in the right place. On the top screen, that top screen is the actual video that will be published to YouTube. So this is where I'm scoring my timeline and it's always available. So earlier on when I said this isn't the most color accurate, it doesn't have to be color accurate. This is just so I can see how the video is going to be playing. What happens is down on the bottom, I'm scrubbing through, scrubbing through, I can see what's what. I think, right, I want to, let's find a clip. Let's find a clip. I want to do something with this shot. Not that shot, because I've got it too much. So I'll be thinking, right, I want to do something with this shot. The color doesn't quite look right. So 
I can go into this, it's selected. If I then double click it, it loads that here as the source footage. What also means I can do is I can use the effects and I can go in and add masking for number plates and stuff. Now, another thing, so I've got all this stuff over here. I know, bear with me, and I'm wrapping up this video very, very quickly. I've got my scopes over here so I can see if any highlights and shadows are clipping or being crushed, and I've got my audio over there. But if I, let's stick with this clip, wish to change the color of that, I will then press the button on the keyboard and change to my color workspace. So now you will see everything has just changed. So now this, is what's going to be on YouTube, but it's now come down onto the better monitor. The one that's more eye level, it's color accurate, or it's better color accuracy than the top screen. I have got everything here. Now my scopes and my levels are all up top. So what that means is I can come in here and go into, we'll start off with basic correction. And first thing I always do, get rid of the contrast. I will work it back from that. So blacks, we'll just, until the blacks start touching zero, we'll just drop the blacks down. Play it by ear, because not always is there going to be actual blacks in your shot, so you don't want to make something black when it shouldn't be black. And same goes to, for whites. I've already overexposed this shot, so there's no point increasing the whites at all. Same with the shadows, make some tweaks, and same on the highlights. You can then start to bring back that contrast if you wish. And then you can just mess about a little bit with the vibrance. I don't have too much vibrance and saturation. I very rarely add more than like 5% on the saturation, otherwise it just looks ridiculous. And if I was really going into a lot of effort, and I don't always for the regular content, I just try and shoot it with the correct color profile on the camera. But if I'm doing more of a promotional video or something like that, I will then go into like color wheels and match and finesse the mid-tones, highlights and shadows even more with the color wheels here. So I can, this is the exposure value and then I can tint those. So if I want the shadows looking a bit blue and the highlights looking a bit orange, a bit Hollywood effect, apparently teal and orange, <laughs> then I can do that in there, should I wish. Double click all that just to reset that. So that's basically how I then go out editing, export it, upload it, do my thumbnail, which I do in Photoshop, by the way. Um, so yeah, that just gives you an idea of what goes into editing. Oh, and the one thing I've not mentioned actually is the two or three hours I can easily spend just looking for the music because I'll have an idea what I want, but then I also think, what do you guys want? My taste in music isn't necessarily your taste. And in fact, a lot of what I would personally listen to, I don't necessarily use for the channel. I try and use something that I know is gonna appeal to most people. So yeah, there we have it then. So I hope you find this behind the scenes video useful and maybe a little bit entertaining. If you're just starting out and thinking of doing a YouTube channel, this gives you some ideas. So all that equipment that I mentioned as well, you don't need all of that. You can just film just on a phone. You can edit just on a tablet if you wish. I enjoy making videos. I've been doing videos long before I was doing the YouTube channel. I've been detailing for about 15 or so years and I've been making videos probably for about 10 to 15 years. In fact, I've got some detailing videos before YouTube was even probably a thing. Um, and then, yeah, like I've said many times before, the two just come together, basically. Like, I'm making videos for YouTube, I enjoy detailing, why not do a detailing YouTube channel? So that's where we are, are rather. That's why I have all of that. It is a serious hobby and interest of mine. That's why I have the lights, the, everything, basically. But anyway, I'm waffling now. Um, oh, one other thing to mention, this office. Yes, yeah, so this has just had a refurb. And again, really, really mental. I know I've got the blue light shining on the back. <laughs> it sounds daft, and this is because of the projects that I'm working on. I've got medium gray walls on three walls, and that's so your eyes don't bias towards one color. So if you've got blue walls or red walls, it may affect what you're seeing on your monitor. And I've just got that bit of orange behind because I wanted a bit of color when I walk in. Blackout blind, although it's leaking some light around the edges. Um, so yeah, as I was saying a moment ago, you don't need to worry about all the gear. The only advice I would give you is get some headphones. If you can't edit in a room that's got decent audio, invest in some good quality headphones. I use them quite often, but I think I've got this room set up pretty much as I need. Anyway, 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 anyway. Enough waffling on. As always, thanks very much for watching. 
I really, really do hope you've enjoyed this and it's given you a bit of a different insight as to what goes on into making a video. Um, hopefully it gives you guys some ideas on how to make your videos a little bit better if you're already making them or maybe you want to start making videos. If you've got any questions, as always, drop me a message on Instagram at randomly set. If you enjoy this, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe with this icon just here. Put a couple of videos down below as well. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.